Today we're going to be having a look at one of the newest watches offered by Christopher Ward. It's the C60 Elite GMT 1000. It comes in their standard wood presentation box, which is very, very nice. One of the nicest presentation boxes that I've seen from any micro brand. Now, before we actually look at the watch, let's have a look at what also comes included in the box. You have the information for the COSC certification. So yes, this is a COSC certified watch. And then you also have some pouches with a microfiber cloth you have the instruction manual and then you have the warranty card keep in mind that this is a five year warranty on the movement which is one of the longest i've ever seen in any watch brand micro brand or not by the way you've you can see that i've opted for this kind of lighting because this watch plays really really well with the light so i want to i want to show you what this looks like and there you have it the c60 elite gmt an absolutely stunning watch you can see from the second you take it out of the box, it's just begging to be put on your wrist. An absolutely gorgeous watch. So now, let's take a closer look at this. So here you have the C60 Elite GMT 1000. This is in the blue tone, which personally, both for the GMT and for the non-GMT versions of these watches, I think is probably the best looking of the bunch. It, I really like the blue that they've gone for. It's a very, very deep royal blue. It's very, very nice. And I really like how it contrasts with that white, a 24 hour chapter ring on the inside. And then those little orange accents on the GMT hand on that lollipop seconds hand and on the pip at the top of the bezel now let's get some of the technical specifications out of the way and then we can actually have a look at what i like and don't like about this watch first of all you have a case diameter of 42 millimeters you have a height of 16 millimeters and a weight of 77 grams now the height is I mean, I think it's just a bit too thick. And I think that part of that is due to the fact that they've put in an exhibition case back. And personally, for the movement and how it looks, the movement, by the way, is a Salita SW330, a cross certified movement. Um, it's a very good movement, obviously. It's a very reliable, solid movement. And Christopher Ward have been using these type of movements in their dive watches for quite a few years now. And keep in mind that they do offer one of the biggest or longest warranties in the watch game, which is five year warranty on the movement of their pieces, which shows how how confident they are in their quality and reliability however um just to maybe shave off just a millimeter millimeter and a half i would have been more than happy to get rid of that exhibition case back and have just a solid case back i'm not sure if that would have actually been able to make it a bit slimmer but i do feel like it sits a bit high on the wrist now if this was a stainless steel watch it would have a serious wobble problem because due to it being so top heavy and due to the fact that most of the pressure is placed right in the center of the watch because of the shape of that case back you are going to have the watch sitting up on your wrist and you are going to have gaps between or at least in my case you're going to have gaps between and i've got seven and a quarter inch wrists uh, you're going to have the gaps between the the lugs and your wrist so if this was a heavy stainless steel watch which it would be considering the dimensions of it um if it was a heavy stainless steel watch it'd be going side to side on your wrist that's not the case because at the end of the day as i said it is a titanium a case so it doesn't have that problem however i think it's just too tall or at least in my opinion it is now if we carry on looking at things like the water resistant now that is one of the very very impressive aspects of this watch it has 1000 meter water resistance on a gmt watch for under 2000 pounds now that is pretty incredible that is pretty amazing obviously most of us watching this review are never going to get even to one tenth of that depth
If you compare this watch to a watch with similar specifications from a brand like Omega, for example, you'd be paying probably three times the price of this one. So that's when the price really comes into perspective and that's when you start seeing this watch for what I think is quite a bargain that it is. Now, one of the things that is a bit of a, a, bit of a disappointment is the bracelet. It, I don't know if you've been able to hear it for the past couple of minutes, but it, it does squeak quite a bit, especially around the clasp. It does squeak quite a bit. But besides that, I mean, I understand it's a titanium bracelet, so obviously that's going to be more expensive to produce than stainless steel, but I'm not sure why they've gone for such a plain bracelet. I mean, at the end of the day, I guess it does make the dial stand out more but I don't really think you need anything to make this dial stand out more than what it already does because it is a gorgeous, gorgeous dial. Definitely the, the best part of this watch is this dial. And we're gonna talk about this more in a couple of minutes, but first with the bracelet. So one of the first issues I have is that, as you can see, there are small gaps between the case and the bracelet. Now, that's not because of a lack of quality control or because of slacky tolerances. That's just because they have quick release bracelet. Um, they have a quick release bracelet, as you can see there. All you have to do is push down on those two uh, kind of pins and the bracelet comes right off. So in that regard, you do get extra functionality with this watch but it comes at the expense of having what in my opinion is a bit of a bit of an ugly gap there between the bracelet and the case and that uh, that's the kind of thing that bothers me a bit to see those kind of gaps however it's there for a reason now in terms of the actual clasp it's a pretty much ordinary a christopher ward if you've had any christopher ward bracelet you probably had a clasp just like this one now what this one does have, which I really like, is kind of like a Christopher Ward's version of a glide lock system. So all you have to do is push down on this button and then you can pull that bracelet out a bit. And you get probably, I'd say, 65 to 70% of the size of a full link. You get it to be able to adjust it to your liking. So also push down like that. You can make it smaller, and if you wanted to open it up, it's just a matter of pulling it out again. So this is so useful. I mean, for anyone who's had even just a clasp that has a diver's extension, but this is like next level diver's extension because you can finally adjust exactly to the fit you want. And especially in the summertime, uh, your wrists tend to swell up a bit during the day. So to have the ability to be able to adjust this bracelet in a matter of seconds is really, really good. Now let's carry on having a look at the actual dial of the watch. As I said, this is really the star of this piece is the dial. Now, this is for a few reasons. First of all, I really like the balance that they've managed to get, even though they have quite a few things going on in this dial besides, obviously, the GMT functions. You also have, for example, what is essentially two different logos. So first you have the Christopher Ward logo off to the nine, and then below the 12, you have those flags and it is very, very nice. I definitely prefer the fact that they've drawn a form over the over the years since they changed over their logo they've decided to put that flag logo under the 12 because before one of my main issues with the change of the logo was the fact that this top half of the watch dial would look really empty so they fixed that and i think it looks very good very subtle in some lightings you can't even see it for example there it'd be a bit hard to see which makes it even more interesting because it's one of those dials and when you start looking at it in different lighting and different angles you start seeing different elements on it and that's always something very cool to have now in terms of the actual balance of everything, I've, I really appreciate the fact that they've only gone for two lines of text, and I really like the fact that one of them is in orange to keep in line with that contrasting uh, color scheme with the blue, white, and orange. And also, as you can see, everything fits neatly. It's kind of very symmetrical in its own way. I think they've really pulled off a very, very good looking GMT watch. Um, I'd say, personally, this is probably one of my 
uh, one of the GMT watches that I have seen that is most appealing to me, that has the most attractive face. I think they've really, really pulled it off here in terms of design. Now, if you look at the actual GMT hand, it creeps up right into, just a tiny bit into that white chapter ring. I would have maybe preferred to be just a tiny bit further back so that it was flush with the actual outline of the white circle. However, that is a minor, minor complaint. Now, you do obviously have applied indices throughout with highly polished chrome edges. Very nice looking. Uh, then you also have this ceramic insert in the bezel painted in the same tone as the dial, although I've seen that it does look um, a shade or two lighter, uh, depending on the lighting conditions, because it receives light more directly than the centerpiece. But it's a very, very nice looking um, bezel. Now, one complaint that I have with the bezel on this watch is that I've grown accustomed to the bezels on the C60 Trident Pro line of watches, which are excellent excellent bezels i mean some of the best bezels that you can find in diver watches for any price range period just excellent bezels and when you grow accustomed to that and then all of a sudden you get a bezel with this much play in it i mean that's a bit disappointing now i'm not sure if this is only in the piece i'm holding or this is in all of them but i think that that's just a bit too much play especially for christopher ward the company that's already managed to nail the bezels on their watches so i'm not sure what happened here however uh, the action of the bezel is glorious glorious i mean it's excellent just listen to this Every click is so precise. Every click is so discernible one from another. And once it's actually in place, it does feel quite secure. Although once again, you have a bit of playback on it as I was showing you, but it is a very, very solid feeling bezel once it's in action. And that sound is very nice. And it is very easy to grip. It has kind of like a Tudor Black Bay or Tudor Pelagros in style a bezel edge, which I really like because they're very easy to grip and turn. And they also feel very good in the fingers when you're actually turning it. Now, as you can see, it has a helium escape valve at the bottom, similar to some Omegas. You do have a few different variations of finishing on the case. You have um, what appears to be um, uh, brushed on the sides with polished edges at the top of the case that go all throughout side to side of the case. Then if you look at the crown part, you will see um, the same kind of finishing with the polished section at the top that runs throughout, but then because of the crown guards, you do have a much bigger a polished section, which I think looks really good. The crown has the same flag logo at the top with what appears to be a um, sandblasted, bead blasted background. It's a very easy crown to use, very easy, both to screw in and out. And it has a very secure feeling click on each position. So the first click, second click, change the time. And we can also adjust the date, just so you can have a look at what that looks like. Let's pull it up to the date position, there we go. So no problem whatsoever with the crown. In terms of the case back, as I was mentioning with it being a bit tall, the case back is, I mean, it's, not, it's nothing too special. It's an exhibition um, case back with a personalized rotor. Um, I'm I'm really not I'm really not that big of a fan of Christopher Ward's rotors. I think they look very simple, very basic. I would like to see them offer on their dive watch line some rotors with, for example, cutout sections. Something that, that could potentially be really cool is to have, for example, the logo of the flags as a cutout on the rotor that could that could work. Um, so I'm not really sure what's the point of having an exhibition case back for a movement like this, which is a pretty 
it's not an orderly movement but it's not exactly it's not exactly anything to look at either however i do like what they've done in terms of the actual case back design with these little these little cutout sections it does look good and it does look in keeping with the kind of nautic um, appearance that this watch has especially in this color scheme now let's put the bezel back into place everything lines up perfectly obviously as you'd expect with a Christopher Ward now for my final thoughts on this watch if you're in the market for a GMT diver with a thousand meter water resistance with a cross certified movement with a very very high quality of finishing a very very good materials utilized and from a brand that is highly respected in the watch industry then I think for under two thousand pounds I mean you're doing really well on this watch at the end of the day besides the little niggles the little complaints I have about it. It is an excellent watch. It is a very, very well put together watch. And for the price, especially when you put it up against some other, uh, maybe more recognized, more popular brands, you do start to see the, the quality and the technical uh, specifications that you get with this watch. You're just not going to get it from any of those other bigger brands for this price range. So, um, if you like the look of this one, also check out the non-GMT version. You can maybe save a few hundred pounds by getting the non-GMT version instead. Personally, I prefer the GMT version because I travel a lot, so it's also it's always convenient and useful to have a GMT watch to take on my travels. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I'm going to be probably comparing this watch to a couple of the divers that I think would make an interesting comparison over the next few weeks. So be on the lookout for that. Till the next time, peace.